Hi everyone, this is part three of the VW bus restoration. As you can see in this video, our goal is to pull out the main front axle beam and we're gonna clean it up and we're going to paint it and get it back installed as well as have a parts list of things that need to be replaced on it. What I'm showing you here is some of the things that we need to disconnect in order to get uh, the beam dropped out, things that are involved in the steering, the braking, and in the suspension. And there's also other various cabling like accelerator and clutch cable and various things like that. To see a better picture of this, let me show you this cleaner picture. We're going to be pulling out the steering drag link, the emergency brake cabling and shift uh, cabling, the brake piston rod, and then the clutch cable. Uh, so here we're pulling off the, I think this is the shifting assembly here we could just take that nut out and then disconnect just that that rod everything else can be left alone my buddy Patrick's helping me out with that then we move to the master cylinder we get we disconnect the electrical and the the brake lines to that as well as um, the vacuum tubing on the brake booster and the reser the I guess it's the brake fluid reservoir line on the top of that so all that stuff around the master cylinder and brake lines have to be disconnected there. And then, of course, on the brakes, you know, we just pulled apart. Uh, well, actually, we don't really need to do anything on, on the end here. We pulled the rotors off and the wheels, obviously. Um, but uh, we need to undo, eventually, these four bolts to on either side to drop the assembly out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm pulling those four bolts out, and I'm putting just the top one, leaving the top ones in just for now and then eventually we'll pull those out and then drop it. In order to get those ball joints separated from that drag link that you just saw on the ground, I had to buy this tool that's a ball joint separator from Harbor Freight. And the way it works is, I wish I would have showed you, but you basically put that fork end of it in between the rubber of the ball joint and uh, where it goes into the rod. And then the other end is on the end of the rod and you just tighten that and that'll pop that joint down.
Well, now, as you can see, we're just working that main beam loose. I've got a jack in the middle. I've got both my friends, Brian and Patrick, on either side. And we're just kind of working it, wiggling it, you know, hitting with the dead blow. I'm moving the jack down and down and down until we can finally, both sides come free at the same time. We can gently lower it to the ground. Uh, we, we got caught up on something and realized that we did forget one thing, and that was the clutch cable. So Patrick grabbed the grinder, and we just cut it right off. I, I have a new clutch cable I'm going to be replacing anyway. So we got it out, and we can slide it out from under the bus. Now it's time to inspect it. We pulled the brake booster and the master cylinder out, and we're just going to kind of take apart a few things. This is where we're trying to figure out what needs to be replaced, what needs to be fixed, what needs to be, you know, whatever it might be. So there Patrick's digging out the, um, the clips off of those bump stops there. And you can see there's a lower one and an upper one. Uh, he pulls out the lower ones, the upper ones stay there. And I'll talk about those parts and at the end of the video I'll show you the parts list of things I'll be replacing. Next, we start fighting with the sway bar links. Um, those things were just rusted and the bolts just, I believe they both ended up stripping out and uh, the sway bar links themselves were just destroyed. So that will be added to my parts list and the um, problem with them, the bolts stripping out is they are threaded into there and we're, we went ahead uh, later on and had to drill them out. So that was kind of a pain. You can see that Patrick and Brian are struggling a bit with those things, putting heat on them and um, PB blaster and nothing seemed to work. We ended up having to drill them out. Next, we noticed there was just some rust holes in that these areas here around the lower beam. And so we're just kind of digging that out and seeing how much rust it is and trying to clean that all out. Um, we end up cutting that rust out and um, I was talking to Brian and I was saying do we need to like weld in new patches there well because it's just on the outer skin of the the axle beam there the actual axle goes through that and so that's not really structural right there so what we'll do is we'll just cut out those holes clean it all up and blast it all out in the inside and we're just gonna pour 15 all that so here you can see Brian doing those holes and um, Patrick's using the needler to you know, clean that all out. And we're getting everything prepped and taken off and, and ready to um, start sandblasting and cleaning the actual beam up. And here we have a sandblasted beam and there's still a lot of areas that need to be you know, degreased, spot blasted, but it's starting to come together and starting to look a little bit cleaner. You can see we got all up inside those those access holes that we created. And now onto the degreasing and power washing. And here's Patrick doing a little bit of spot blasting of some of those problem areas. He's just using that little Harbor Freight hopper gun, a little spot blasting gun. And then Brian here, we, 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 like I said, we cut those sway bar links off and we're just trying to, uh, trying to unthread the bolts, but there it's a pretty much a lost cause. Like I said, we end up just having to drill these all the way out. I think in the replacement kit, they come with new, uh, through bolts and, and nuts anyway. So while the beam was out, I took the opportunity to spot blast all the areas that the beam covered. And so you see I'm inside of a fender well here and uh, also was doing some sanding. Same type of prep I did in, in, you know that you see me do before. And even the inside where the bolts go through, all that's been spot blasted, sanded. The upper deck where the uh, above the beam is all sanded and treated and basically trying to, to get everything pour 15 that's going that that's would be difficult otherwise with the beam installed. 
And here's the finished product. It's hard to see because the sun's shining in through the back. Also, the paint's dry, so it looks much glossier than than it really is. It's a the semi-gloss, which is a little bit flatter uh, of the Pore 15 paint. But again, I didn't show you doing this, but just like in part two video, it's just it's just brushed on. You know, obviously I prepped it with degreaser and power washed it and all that stuff. The metal was completely clean and free of grease. And then I also just painted the Pore 15 on the axle the, in the beam itself and on everything there. Obviously it was, you know, degreased and sandblasted. You saw all the prep work that went into it. So we had a great surface to paint. Now it's going back in. Now you're probably wondering why am I putting it back in with, you know, all the things that need to be replaced on it. Well, everything that needs to be replaced on it can be pretty easily replaced with it in the car. But the thing is, is I need it in the car so I can move the car around. I just can't have it sitting on my driveway for weeks. It's got to go in and out of the garage. The best way to put it back in, obviously, is to have three guys, one with a jack in the middle and other two guys lining everything up. It fits pretty tight on the frame, so it's really critical that it goes up kind of evenly and, uh, and, and you know, it's jacked up. Now, you watch when I jack it up, you might see the bus itself move up a little bit. It's on jack stands. Uh, if it does, it's kind of binding up on it, and you'll see that It'll bind up a little, we wiggle, everybody wiggles all around and it drops up in and we keep doing that inch by inch until it's finally in. And once it's finally in and the, it looks like the bolts are lined up, uh, you know, we'll, you could use a, a pin or something to help line them up a little bit better and, and fine tune the alignment. You don't just want to use an air ratchet right away you want to just make sure they're, they they hand thread in easily, and then you can just thread them in with a, with a ratchet by hand first. And then once they're comfortably in, you can then you know finish tightening them with the air ratchet. But you want to make sure you don't cross thread them and that everything's threading in uh, pretty easily because obviously when everything's been cleaned and and uh, and painted. It should go in easily. We also put anti-seize on the bolts as well, as well as also you could see they're black because we also did paint them. And uh, so yeah, that makes a nice finishing touch and it makes it to where those bolts won't just rust inside the frame again. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I think someone's got a pair of those. Haven't you ever heard a 46 year old man scream? All right, so here's a list of the parts that I'm going to have to order. First we have, we'll start with the, I guess the brakes. The brake light switch, I have two of those in my bus depot cart here um, because my master cylinder has two of these. The brake fluid reservoir grommets, I'm gonna get two of these. Now the parts that I'm going to use in the existing, uh, among the existing things are the booster, which I'm gonna clean up and repaint and the proportioning valve, which I'll show you a picture of, I'll clean that up and repaint it, and the reservoir. So the new stuff is gonna be the, obviously the master cylinder, which I have down here. Uh, I'm going to get the OEM German, or the ATE one. I may not buy it from Bus Depot, but I'm definitely gonna get the ATE one. And the brake light switch, two of these and two grommets. And I think that's it for the brakes and some, some of these brake the clips. Oh, and the rotors, obviously, too. I'm gonna go ahead and just get new rotors. I'm gonna get the Brembo, uh, which is kind of like the mid-grade uh, rotors here. So I'm gonna get a pair of those as well. So that takes care of the brakes. Now, onto the suspension. Uh, if you look at the diagram here, you could see there's the two bump stops on either side. We have shocks, we have the sway bar, and uh, the steering damper. Um, I, we inspected the main bearings, both the inner and outer, 
and those seem to be fine and um, so and the tie rods seem to be functioning fine and so really uh, what we're gonna what we absolutely need to replace are the sway bar bushings were completely gone we had to cut them out we had to drill them out I mean it was just they were just a mess the sway bar itself looks good I'll just clean it up and repaint it so I'm gonna get the sway bar mount kit from bus depot 29.95 that's the both links with those metal wraps and clips and the bolts then the suspension stops now there's two different products on bus depot for these suspension stops this one the rounded one is the top and the more cone or pointy one is the bottom the bottom ones look really good um, so I'm just going to replace the two top ones. So I'm going to get buy two of these. The other thing that I have to replace is these locking plates, which are kind of expensive. I have to buy four of those. There's a locking plate holding on those bumps on either side. So there's two on each side. And I didn't get the ones on the top off, but the ones on the bottom broke off as we pulled them off. So I'm assuming those are all going to be bad. So I'll go ahead and just retain the bottom bump stops but re replace all four locking plates and then uh, we noticed that the steering damper when we took it off it's completely shot so we're gonna get, I'm gonna get a new steering damper which is this guy right here and new shock absorbers I'm gonna get a new pair of shocks um, just the ones I had were okay but they're rusted I'll get some new, uh, yeah, we talked about that. What else? Oh, just some extra lug nuts. Some of them were just pretty damaged. New front uh, seal, wheel seals. I'll get two of these and go ahead and put those on. Like I said, the bearings look good. Everything else looks good. So that's pretty much my part list for Bus Depot. And that also concludes part three of the VW bus restoration videos. Please like, share, and subscribe to follow along the progress. Thanks for watching. <laughs>